I got an email recently from Rafi Lewin asking me if I had ever done a video on the RGB curve module. And I had to go and check. And it turns out that no, I haven't. So let's do it. Hi, and welcome to episode 72 of Understanding Dark Table. I have done a video on the old tone curve module and I'll put a link up there in the top left hand corner for you uh, if you want to go and check that out I think it was episode 53 but I've not done a video on the RGB curve module which is essentially the same in terms of user interface they work exactly the same the only thing that differs between the tone curve module and the RGB curve module is the old tone curve module worked in the lab color space and the RGB curve module, as the name suggests, works in the RGB color space, which is linear. So I've picked just three images from the road trip that Kath and I did around New South Wales in August. And let's just dive into the first one. So this is some skeletal remains of cattle that we found on a backcountry road somewhere. And when I originally processed this image, I made it monochrome. So we'll do that again. But before we do that, I want you to notice that in the history stack, I have disabled the exposure module and the filmic RGB module. Now, I have Darktable set up to use a scene, ref scene referred workflow by default. But because we're going to be doing some stuff with the RGB curve, I don't need Filmic doing its thing, and therefore I don't need the exposure boost either. So that's why I've turned those off. Okay, looking at the RGB curve, as you can see, it is very similar to the tone curve. And basically we have this solid white line that runs from top right to bottom left. The horizontal axis represents the input values for any given pixel in our image in terms of its luminosity. And the vertical scale represents the output luminosity for any given pixel in your image. So let's turn on the over and under exposure indicators with our O key. As we can see, these red bits are clipping in the highlights and these little bits of blue up here in the shadows in the top right hand corner represent little bit of clipping in the shadows. So what I could do is grab this node in the bottom left hand corner, remembering that whilst it is in the bottom left hand corner, then its input value is equal to its output value. If we mouse over that node in the bottom left hand corner, we can see some numbers displayed across the bottom of the graph. The first number, the one to the left of the forward slash, represents the input value for this pixel. The number to the right of the forward slash represents the output value. And the number in brackets represents the change. So if I was to drag this node up the left hand side of the graph, what we've done if we just read those numbers, is we've taken what was an input value of zero, so in other words, pure black, and we've now lifted it to a value of 61.2, and that represents a change in brackets of 61.2. And as we can see from the image, everything's all washed out and yucky. Okay, if we were to now bring that node across to the right, we can see that what we are doing, if we're reading those numbers again, is we've taken the first 37.2 values that went from pure black up into the, you know, the dark greys, and we've now clipped all of them to a value of zero, which is the second value. That's the output value. So we've introduced clipping that wasn't there before. Okay, let's just reset the module again. Now that we understand that much, 
let's look at what happens with our midtones. If we add a node in the middle here and we drag that upwards, we are essentially saying what was a midtone of roughly 127, 127.6, but yeah, roughly 127, we are now remapping that value to a value of 166, which is clearly more than halfway between 0 and 256. And hence, that is why the whole image became lighter, because we've lightened all of the midtone values in our image. So far, so good. Yep. And if we drag it down, then we've once again taken what was the middle value, so roughly 127, I'm actually at 126.8, and we've now dropped it to a value of 75.8, hence why everything has got darker in our image, because we've made the middle of the image that much darker. In terms, of, when I say the middle, I mean the middle luminosity. Okay, so how can we use this to process an image? Now, you've probably heard me say in previous videos that I'm not a big fan of the color balance module because to me it's a lot more complicated than it needs to be. I, I love a tone curve module because they're super flexible and I prefer a curve over something like levels because with levels, you only get three points to adjust, your black point, your white point, and your midpoint. You can drag the midpoint anywhere you want, but you can't create an S-curve. With a curve, as the name suggests, I can add as many nodes as I want and create whatever kind of messed up look I'm after. That's not what we're here to do, though, but this is why I like a curve module. So, in order to process an image like this, what I want to do is drag the output value down until my clipping has either completely disappeared or almost disappeared. Where that is at at the moment, I would consider that a good point. I'm happy to have just a few pixels in the image that clip, as long as it's not too many. With the blacks, I've got a little bit of clipping up here in the shadows and a little bit here in the shadows and a little bit over here on the left in the shadows. I'd probably be happy to clip just a little bit more. So I'm just going to bump that across to there. And I'd be okay with that as a starting point for my image. And as we can see from the histogram, we now have values that spread right across the entire histogram. Next, it would be a question of, do I want more contrast in this particular image? If I did, I would probably introduce a second module. So rather than trying to create an S-curve on this module, I'd create a second RGB curve module. And to do that, I will simply middle click on this button here that introduces a second module of the RGB curve. And the reason I introduced a second module is because now I can work with a curve where my default curve runs from top right to bottom left, which means the middle is actually in the middle. If I look at the original curve that I've modified, my middle is no longer in the middle, if you get my drift. So if I wanted to introduce a little bit of contrast to this, I would try and keep the midpoint in the middle of the graph, and I might lift up some mids here, and at the same point in the shadows, I would drag down an equal value, so the middle of the curve is still going right through the middle of the graph. So now I've introduced just a little bit more contrast than what I had before. Now, in terms of turning this into a monochrome, I would then probably go, well, let's use the color balance. I generally don't, but 
If we drag that to its lowest value, the output saturation, you'll notice that's 50%. I actually want it to be zero, so I'll just type in zero. Now I have my monochrome image. And the last thing I'd probably do with that would be add a bit of split toning because I like a bit of a sepia look. So I come over to split toning, maybe grab the authentic sepia, which I don't understand why these saturation values are set so high. That is way too much saturation, but I don't know if that's just me. Uh, so I would drop that down to something like that. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And once again, I've got just a little bit of clipping, fair bit over there in those trees in the background, but that's okay. They're not central to the story. Got just a couple of white pixels that are clipped. Perfectly happy with that. And after that, I'd probably crop the image and call it done. I don't think I need any noise reduction because this was shot at 100 ISO. Don't really need to worry about noise out of my A7 III at 100 ISO. I could probably add some sharpening, but then I'm, I'm done. Okay, let's move on to another image. So this is obviously a fairly extreme image in terms of color information. And there's really not a whole lot else going on in this picture. It's all about the color. Uh, this is canola for those that have never seen it. Uh, it's a crop that we grow here in Australia. I think they use it for cattle feed and sheep feed and whatnot. And once again, if we go over to the history, uh, yeah, again, so Filmic is on, so I'm going to turn that off and I will turn off exposure and we are back to the basic raw image. What I didn't talk about in this RGB curve interface is some of the other parameters that are available here. So let's go through those. We've got the mode RGB linked channels. That is the default. What that means is that it's RGB. It's always going to be RGB because that's the color space this module works in. And linked channels means that whatever nodes you introduce and whatever you do on this curve, it is going to be applied to the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel in equal proportions all of the time. Your other option, as you can probably guess, is RGB independent channels. And what that will allow you to do, I'll just reset the curve and then I'll change to independent values, is give you three tabs here, R, G, and B for our red, green, and blue channels. And you can then change the curve for each color channel as you so desire. All right. Next, we've got that two eyedroppers. One is a single point. So if you grab that, you can simply click on any pixel in your image and it will provide you with a line on the graph to show you exactly where the luminosity for that particular pixel falls on the graph. Or we have the range picker, which will allow us to select an area and that will then give us this pink overlay across a section of our histogram to show us the range of luminosities that are covered within that particular area. This is handy if you're just trying to focus on a particular part of a range of luminosities within your image to modify by using that range picker tool and selecting the area you want to know about, you can then go, okay, I want to make that the darkest point and I want to make that the brightest point and do whatever it is you want to do. I'm completely making a mess of this image, but that's okay. I'm just trying to demonstrate how you would use these eyedropper tools. Interpolation method, we have monitor tonic spline, centripetal spline, and cubic spline. I remember covering those in... Oh, what video was that? 
If you remember, please sing out in the comments down below because I don't remember what it was. And the only reason I can't go back to it now is because the Darktable user manual on darktable.org has not been updated to include an RGB curve section. There is a section for the tone curve module, but I can't remember if tone curve had those. Uh, yes, it did. Oh, well, maybe that was the video in which I covered that. So definitely check out episode 53. Again, I'll throw a link up in the top left hand, sorry, top right hand corner for you. Uh, that will explain what those splines do and how they respond differently. Uh, and finally, we've got Compensate Middle Grey, and I will be straight up front, I don't know exactly what that is trying to do. And because there is no update in the manual to include the RGB curve module, then I cannot go and look it up. So... That is the RGB curve module. I have to say, I very, very rarely have... Actually, I don't even know if I've ever used the independent channels mode. I tend to just stick to the linked channels and dial in whatever adjustments I need to create the white point, the black point, and however much contrast I want using the module just like that. Like I said, for me, it just works and I find it easier to deal with than something like the color balance module. And like I said, I'm not a fan of levels because with levels, you can only adjust one mid-tone value. Yes, you can drag it left or right to make it brighter or darker, but you can't use a levels module to create extra contrast, which is something I can do quite easily with a curve module. Alrighty, we didn't get to the third image. Let's just have a quick look at the third image. So I think the reason I chose this was because this was a very low contrast image. This was a foggy morning in Tenterfield, and sadly there is a little bit of dirt on my sensor here. I can see that. Yes, sorry. Again, let's turn off Oh, I have already turned off filmic and exposure and we can see that this is quite a low contrast image just by looking at the histogram. So again, we'll jump over to the RGB curve and again, I will hit O on the keyboard to turn on my clipping indicators. I can now bring this down so that I can see pure black being clipped and I'll just drag it back to there. An image like this, I don't need to bring this top right uh, node all the way over to there being a white point. Because this was heavy fog, there really doesn't need to be a, a point in the image that is pure white. As long as it's bright, it'll be okay. I really feel like... If I want to retain a little bit of the mood of that foggy morning, then I really wouldn't push it all the way to having a white pixel. I'd have something like that where I've certainly brought the brightest pixels up in brightness, but I haven't driven them all the way to being pure white because... I was there, I remember what it was like. It was dull and it was foggy. What little daylight there was was heavily diffused. This was, you know, quarter to seven in the morning and the sun had only just come over the horizon and this town's in a little bit of a valley so there was no direct path from the sun to this particular piece of land even if there wasn't fog, it still would have been in shadow. So I know that I don't need a white point in an image like this. But I could still perhaps introduce a little bit of contrast if I wanted to. Although in this instance, 
that tends to make the fog look less impactful than it was. So I probably wouldn't even bother. I had not practiced on this image before I decided to include it in the video, as you can tell. I probably wouldn't do a whole lot more to that image, other than clean up the dirt on the sensor. Alright, that is the RGB curve module. Like I said, it basically works pretty much the same in terms of user interface as the old tone curve module, the only difference being that the RGB curve works in the RGB color space. All right, questions, comments, sing out down below. Patrons, thank you again for your support. All righty, that will do it, and I will catch you in the next one.